Phytophthora ramorum, the microorganism that causes sudden oak death, can cause extensive bleeding cankers on the lower portion of the trunk of susceptible coast live oaks. Cankers are areas killed by the pathogen. Highly susceptible trees can develop large cankers that girdle the trunk and cause death within a few years. Killed trees can remain standing for a few to many years. Alternatively, the combination of decay associated with sudden oak death cankers and pre-existing wood decay in the trunk may cause infected trees to fail before they have been killed. Trees with moderate resistance may wall off the canker and form callus around it. But if the canker is large enough, eventually decay at the canker site can cause the tree to fail. Some trees show more highly resistant responses. Here's an example. Notice that this tree is growing near a California bay. Phytophthora ramorum leaf infections on California Bay are the source of the spores which infect oaks. We evaluated this tree every year beginning in 2000. No cankers were seen until we observed this bleeding canker in September 2005, after a very wet spring. Chipping off the outer bark near the bleeding, revealed a small Phytophthora ramorum canker in the live bark, or phloem, tissue. By two years after the bleeding canker was first seen, it had become inactive, with no new bleeding. We continued to observe this canker over time. The canker has remained inactive and the killed bark has eroded away. Here's a different tree that showed the same sort of resistant reaction. The canker appeared in 2005. Chipping off the outer bark near the bleeding exposed the edge of a canker. By the next year, the bleeding had stopped and the canker had not expanded. This canker remained inactive. Here's a third example. Chipping off the outer bark exposed the edge of a canker. By the next year, the bleeding had stopped and the canker showed no further development. In our long-term study, cankers became inactive in 46% of the trees that were infected during the wet years of 2005 and 2006. As with the previous trees in this video, the canopy of this tree showed no ill effect of the inactive canker. Can trees that wall off a canker get reinfected, or are they immune from future infections? Let's look at an example that addresses that question. This oak is located under a California bay, which produces numerous P. ramorum spores on infected leaves during wet conditions. During rainstorms, this tree is drenched with water carrying P. ramorum spores. After the wet spring of 2005, this oak developed many new bleeding cankers. This close-up shows at least five bleeding cankers. Chipping the outer bark away reveals a portion of one canker. By the next year, one of these cankers is still bleeding, but bleeding has stopped in two other cankers. By 2008, after a couple of drier years, most of these cankers have stopped bleeding and are not expanding. Healthy bark growth is evident by the light brown areas of newly formed bark. In 2010, after another wet spring, this tree started to develop another set of new Phytophthora ramorum infections. By 2011, some cankers had become inactive, 
and some new bleeding cankers were seen. By 2012, some cankers that were bleeding in 2011 became inactive. The new bleeding may be from expansion of existing cankers or may represent new infections. Comparing pictures of the tree taken in 2005 and 2012, we can see that although this tree shows resistant reactions on some cankers, it continues to develop new infections after periods of wet weather. From what we've observed, even trees which show the ability to form callus and wall off a canker can be reinfected if environmental conditions are favorable for disease and they are located close to a source of P. remorum spores. Hence, survival of such coast live oaks can be enhanced by removing nearby California bay trees that serve as the source of P. remorum spores.